Regularly scheduled programs will not be seen at this time so that we may bring you the following special program. From the Marion Golf Club in Ardmore, Pennsylvania. It's the final round of the 71st Annual United States Open Golf Championship. And here at Marion, none of the golfers, amateur or professional, are bringing Marion to her knees. Jim Simons has lost two shots to par today, but still has a one-shot lead on the two-time Open champion, Jack Nicklaus. Incidentally, there are 11 players in this battle in the fourth and final round within three shots of the lead, and believe me, the tough holes are yet to be played. And this Open champion knows of what I'm speaking. I should certainly say so, Chris. With all these great players bunched coming to the last few holes, you know, the last four or five holes here are some of the greatest finishing holes in the game of golf. So the man that can hold his stability and hold his game together the last few holes will be the winner. It would be most impossible at this point to pick the winner. But I'd like to say that some of these great amateurs have played this golf course remarkably well, and this young boy, Sam uh, Simons, has just been holding on great playing with Nicholas out there today, and we're really looking forward to see him uh, come into view on our camera to see uh, this great young uh, player uh, play against Nicholas as well as this golf course. Well, of course, there are many unique features of Marion, which dates back to 1912, and an added feature today is hot, humid weather in this lovely Philadelphia suburb. Speaking of those unique features, the difficulties of the course, we want you to uh, review with us again some of these little problems. Well, this is the 18th hole here, and look at this chute that you drive out of up into the fairway here. It's over 200 yards to the fairway, and you have many holes on this golf course, especially the 12th, coming out of a chute like this. And this is uh, the landing area, the narrow area of the fairways. Some of these fairways are only 25 to 30 yards wide. And then we have heard and read so much about the rough and seen so much. Now, this is what it's like, especially on areas where the, this large gallery have not uh, been able to tromp it down in. You see how deep this club goes into there. Boy, and then look at the brush and grass that hangs out over the sand over the bunkers into this and makes it most difficult you could get against one of these and the narrowness of the greens look at the width between this green and the bunker here and there of course is the pin placement real close to the front which was one i'm yesterday but it's the same today and that is the famous wicker baskets for the flags that they have here at marion though the course is old they have had only two uh, course superintendents the late joe valentine and now his son richie valentine and that valentine family has kept this course uh, with this uh, another open championship right at the top. They really have, Chris. They've done a m remarkable job. And speaking of a remarkable job, take a look at the 11th hole. Watch the play and listen to Jim McKay. Thank you very much, Chris. Jim Colbert and George Archer are playing the 11th hole. This is one of the most famous in all of golf, the one that they call the Baffling Brook. Cobbs Creek meanders through it, goes around to the right side of the green and then in back of it. This is George Archer, the former Masters champion, on the green and two, the tallest man on the professional golf tour. Archer started the day at one over par. He's now two over, but well within striking distance. Remember, he's only three shots out of the lead. Jim Simons, the amateur, still leads at one under par, a shot ahead of the great Jack Nicklaus. This pin placement today is about as difficult as it can be on 11, tucked behind that trap on the rear part of the green. George tried to play it safe, it looks like, and play for the middle of the green, but he's too short. Left himself a very difficult putt, and look at that. You're going to see a lot of that today. Great putters leaving themselves tremendously long putts for pars is because of these slick greens that have been trimmed to 5.30 seconds of an inch. There's your scoreboard. Simon's one ahead of Nicholas two ahead of Lee Trevino and Jim Colbert who's in this twosome and Ray Floyd who's having a good round today and Bobby Nichols. Floyd by the way is two under on today's round. We'll be seeing him very soon. A real charge. A moment ago there were 12 players within three shots of each other. There are six within two shots. Remember Simons, Nichols, Trevino, Colbert, Floyd, Nichols. Archer at plus two. The weather conditions are perfect. It's a warm, hot summer day. There's a wind blowing that will come into play. This putt shouldn't break too much. And 
George Archer lets his pod remain at plus two for the tournament. One over on today's round. This is the 11th hole, remember, they're playing as we're, we're bringing you just about all of the back nine here today. Jim Colbert, 30 years old, native of Kansas City, a former football player at Kansas State despite his comparatively small stature of five feet nine. Jim went over this green, chipped back very nicely, and now has this putt for a par four. Something else you'll see all day today is these great golfers looking over one and two foot putts for perhaps as long as a minute because the breaks are very subtle and very tricky. Look at the putt of the Jim Colbert is using. It's a strange thing. They call it the potato masher and a number of other names, the flying saucer, whatever you'd like. You can make up your own name for it. It's a new kind of putter. Colbert's been doing very well with it. He says it's the difference in his game. This for the par four on the 11th hole. He's got it. Jim Colbert remaining one over for the tournament. Two shots out of the lead. Now back to the tee of this 11th hole, and this is Lee Trevino, the Open champion in 1968 at Rochester, co-holder of the low scoring record for the U.S. Open, and he's one over. He also just two shots out of the lead. You hit a blind shot off this 11th tee over a hill, and then hopefully short of Cobbs Creek. Here's the landing area. And he's on the fairway. Lee Trevino, I believe, has made the fairway. I can't see it from here. ABC's exclusive color coverage of the final round of the United States Open Golf Championship will continue after this message. The 11th is one of the most famous holes in all the world of golf. It's so short, only 370 yards this par four, and yet it holds so many perils for the unwary golfer. You hit a blind tee shot here with either a lofted wood or an iron because you have to play short over a hill down into the valley into a small landing area just short of Cobbs Creek, which actually meanders all the way through this hole. It can cause you all kinds of problems. There's also very heavy rough there. You hit up onto the green, and the creek itself meanders around to the right of the green and all the way around behind. You can even go into it if you're long. Well, here we are at the tee of the 11th hole, which is also one of the most famous particular points in golf. This is a monument to the day that Robert Tyre Jones Jr. completed his grand slam by closing out Eugene Homan's 8 and 7 on this hole. Let's take a little closer look at it. I think as we move in, you'll be actually be able to read the inscription. September 27, 1930, Robert Tyre Jones Jr. completed his grand slam by winning the United States Amateur Championship. And here he was on the day that it occurred, the great immortal Bobby Jones. And this was the instant when Gene Homans congratulated him. The grand slam had been completed for the first and only time in the history of the game. What a moment to remember. And then there are others. This was Gene Sarazen leading the tournament in 1934, getting in trouble on the 11th, eventually taking a seven and losing out to Olin Dutra. And now at that same spot, almost, but on the fairway, here is Lee Trevino. A live shot now as he hits to this 11th green on this par four, 370 yard hole, the famous 11th at Marion. And he's okay, you see him in the middle of the putting surface. He'll be coming up at it with a fairly straight putt in his attempt for a birdie three. Lee Trevino playing today with Bobby Nichols. Nichols, who last year won that Dow Jones tournament in $60,000. Now here's Bobby, one over par, as is Trevino. They're tied for third place at the moment, along with Jim Colbert. Nichols, pro at the Firestone Country Club in Akron, Ohio now. Stays there most of the time, but uh, comes out for the big tournaments and plays very well in them. Bobby Nichols and Lee Trevino on the 11th hole. Trevino, we would repeat if you don't know, is the happy Mexican from Texas. Bobby Nichols caught the sand with his second shot, so he is in trouble. One of the leaders with a problem now. Remember, Jim Simons, the amateur, is still the leader here. No amateur has won this tournament in 38 years since Johnny Goodman did it in 1933. Simons, one shot ahead of Nicholas. They'll be coming within range of our cameras very soon. Two shots back are Lee Trevino, there you see it, Bobby Nichols, and Jim Colbert. The playoff, if any, will be at 18 holes tomorrow, and you'll see it live on ABC from 4.30 to 5.30 Eastern Daylight Time. That possibility, a very strong one at the moment, of course. Bobby Nichols is the young man who uh, 
came back from an automobile accident as a teenager, spent many, many months in the hospital, very nearly died, was unconscious, I think, for about a month, and always seems to get his game up for the big ones. How good is he out of the sand, Byron, if you can hear me up there? Well, <clears throat> yes, Jim, he's quite good out of the sand. He has a very soft touch, this man is. He's strong. For a strong player, he has a very soft touch, and that's what he needs there because he has very little room. He'll have to hit this shot with an open face, cut just a little sand out underneath the ball, and drop the ball very softly if he expects to get close to the hole. Okay, well, Nichols looking over that shot. And meanwhile, on the 12th hole, here we have Jim Colbert. Remember, he is tied with Nichols and Trevino for third place, just two shots behind the leader. Colbert had rounds of 69, 69, and 73 yesterday, hitting that second shot up to the 12th green. Looks pretty good. It's long. It's going over the green. Colbert, with the wind behind him, has carried it too far and gone over the 12th green. He had a beautiful line on it, but just too much stick. It is over behind, not out of bounds, however. You can go right out into Ardmore Avenue if you go far enough over. Now back to Nichols on the 11th, and you can see that's kind of a fried egg lie he has there. Jim? Yes, Byron. Now this lie, of course, he's going to have to hit this. Now, of course, I couldn't see before, but with this lie, he's going to have to hit with a closed face and explode the sand out underneath the ball. He must play this ball out into the center green. He cannot take a chance to play toward the hole from there. And he stayed right in there. Too bad. Bobby Nichols with that very difficult lie, just two shots out of the lead, now lies three, and he's still in the sand on the historic 11th hole. That's one of the reasons it's so famous. The pin placement today is extremely difficult. It's tucked in the left rear, and he just left it short with that second shot, and goodness knows how long a man might stay there now. Nichols, we started to say before, won a $60,000 first prize last year. Former PGA champion. Dave Marr, you... Uh, Played this hole a couple of times this week in the first two rounds of the U.S. Open. Did you find that sand at all? Well, uh, I was a little bit lucky there, Jim. I made a couple of pars, but I did play with Bobby the first two rounds. And, uh, you know, to in answer your question, he's generally a very good trap player. But with that kind of lie that he had, uh, you know, maybe, maybe he was taking a little bit of a gamble there. I'll tell you, this lie may be worse. He's changing clubs. Looks like he's right up against the bank there, perhaps. Well, he's a very deliberate player, Jim, and it takes him a little while to make his mind up. I think you'll see, uh, you know, through the finishing holes here, Bobby changes clubs quite often. He never seems to really, you know, make his mind up and play right away. It seems to take him, he gets one change of clubs. Okay. Well, he lies three now, and it's a par four hole. If he wants that par to stay one over for the tournament, he have to hold this one out. There are the famous wicker baskets of Marion. Instead of flags, they have those baskets, and there's his shot. Leaving him that one now for a bogey five. So this will be a hole that Bobby Nichols will remember for a long time. Bobby from Louisville, Kentucky. Remember his playing partner is the flamboyant Lee Trevino. There he is. Trevino played yesterday with young Jim Simons. I walked several holes with him, and Lee couldn't have been nicer in the way he tried to keep the 21-year-old amateur Simons loose and relaxed. Jim didn't say anything at all, but Lee was kidding him and uh, in, a, in a way that indicated he really was trying to relax him, not to needle him at all. Bob Rosberg's gotten back into the thick of it. Remember two years ago at Houston, Bob Rosberg, the veteran professional, now from St. Louis, uh, almost won the Open the year that Orville Moody took it. Trevino won it the year before. And now here's Bob Rosberg further up on the course the roly-poly figure of the one-time Stanford University baseball player, cross-handed grip. And, of course, you will be seeing Rosberg, but right now the order of business is a birdie putt by Lee Trevino on the 11th hole. It would put him within one shot of the lead. He's left it short, so Trevino will stay one over, two shots behind the leader, Jim Simons. The youngster has not cracked yet, and he's completed nine holes. Trevino still wearing that bandage on his right forearm that hides the name of a young lady he knew many years ago. It's tattooed on there, and there's no way you can get rid of those. Now Bobby Nichols with this putt for a bogey five. You know, the pin placements are graded by Bob House, the 
vice president of the U.S. Golf Association, as to one, two, three, four. I think this has to be a number one pin placement. Would you, Byron and Dave, agree with that? I certainly would. I think the toughest pin placement on the golf course today really is a tough, difficult place. You must have a lot of nerve if you shoot right at that pin, and that's what uh, apparently what Bobby did, and uh, Lee probably played a little more safely out into the middle of the green because this hole has cost many players, including Sayers and then other people, this championship. It sure has. And, boy, out here today we have about the hungriest group of... Whoops, here comes word. Jim Simons has bogeyed the 10th hole. He's in a tie for the lead with Jack Nicholas, one shot ahead of Trevino and Colbert. Oh, hungriest group since Ben Franklin came to town with only two rolls in his hands, didn't he, to Philadelphia? The deliberate putt of Bobby Nichols, and he gets that five. That's important because it keeps him at plus two, and he is now still only two shots out of the lead because Simons just took a bogey. Now we're back to 12. This is a 400 five yard par four Jim Colbert but his second over the green remember and in his third he is still off the fringe of the green he can down the back and rolled very very fast towards the bunker it's a very difficult green to hold this is for his par four if he misses this or does not make it to put it more properly I think in this case Colbert will go to two over in a tie with Nichols and will be two shots out of the lead instead of one I don't think it's too bad he strikes it with the mashed potato. He very nearly makes it. Jim Colbert. Last tournament he won was the Monsanto Open in 1969. Last year, though, he won $49,000, which still left him 45th on the money list. Colbert goes to plus two, two shots behind the co-leaders, Jim Simons and Jack Nicholas. His playing partner, George Archer, still in the thick of it at plus two. putting for his par. If you've just joined us, there is the story. It's only just begun. Nicholas and Simons, even for the lead, have only completed 10 holes of the final round. George Archer is two shots behind them. There's so many people who could still win this. $30,000 first prize, unless Jim Simons wins it, in which case he gets nothing. He is an amateur. In that case, the low professional would get the $30,000. Simon, at age 21, would not be the youngest ever to win the U.S. Open. Let's watch Archer. He gets his par four. The youngest winner of the Open Championship was John McDermott. 1911 he was the first native born American to win it uh, and he was only 19 years 10 months and 14 days old when he won at the 11th tee we're going to have the leaders very shortly now let's there you're looking back from the 11th green across Cobbs Creek up at the top of the hill they hit the other direction coming at you over that hill from this tee and they are there now Jim Simons and Jack Nicholas Simons was just taking a bogey and Jack Nicholas will be hitting first Nicholas started the day at one under, he is now even. In other words, he has lost a shot to par today. Taking an iron, because you do want to stay short on this hole, short of Cobbs Creek. He's hitting with a crosswind blowing from his right to his left. Twice United States Open champion, going for his third. The lowest 72-hole score for an amateur ever turned in in the U.S. Open was 12 years ago by this man, and Jim Simons is challenging that score today as well as challenging for the title. Listen to that wonderful click. Here it comes. And Jack is smack where he wants to be, in the middle of the fairway. He'll have a good shot up at that flag. But it's a difficult pin placement, remember, tucked in the left corner. The second shot will be interesting. Jim Simons, 21 years old, working on a Father's Day present for his dad. He hopes it would be the U.S. Open Championship. Just uh, a very short time ago, he lost out in the finals for the British Amateur Championship in match play to Steve Melnick, another American. The biggest title he's ever won, the Pennsylvania Open. Playing in his home state. 
Well, the yelp so, so, so far sound appreciative. Sounds like a good one for Jimmy Simons. Did he find the fairway? He's in the fairway, okay. He's all right. So Simons and Nicholas, co-leaders, have good first shots. Let's go up course to Henry Longhurst. And here's the 16th fairway and Bob Rosberg. And it'll be about a four iron. He's just had a birdie three at the last hole. Two under for today. And it's a question whether it makes it up to the top level and it just stays on the top level of the green. And back to Jim McKay. All right, we're now with uh, Jim Colbert on the 13th hole. This is a little short par three, only 129 yards. But as you can see, a tough pin placement, and he's hit a fine shot. Colbert at plus two. We'll return to the Marion Golf Club following this important message. The meticulous play of Jack Nicklaus in evidence on the 11th fairway of the Marion Golf Club in Ardmore, Pennsylvania. It's the United States Open Championship. This is Jim McKay reporting, and this shot will come up over Cobbs Creek, hopefully over a sand bunker, and near the pin, if Nicholas strikes it just right. Pin tucked in the left rear of this green on the famous 11th hole. And he's short, well short, of the flagstick. Now Lee Trevino on the 12th hole, playing one hole ahead of Nicholas, and only one shot behind Nicholas and Jim Simons, who are tied for the lead. And it's long, but it's a good shot. That'll come back. Watch it come back. Rolling down towards the flagstick. Could come very, very close. Look at this. Lee Trevino should get himself a birdie here and go into a triple tie for the lead. That's no fluke. That happens on this green. The green tilts from back to front. And if you put it up on the top with any backspin at all, it'll do exactly, exactly that. He's less than a foot from the hole. Now Jim Simons to hit his second shot on the 11th. Remember, he's tied for the lead, the 21-year-old amateur from Butler, Pennsylvania. There are his previous rounds, 65 yesterday, just one stroke off the open record for a single round of play. Hitting probably an eight or a nine iron. Rossberg got a par on 16, so he's in there one shot out of the lead. And he is shorter than Nicholas. He's way back there. That's going to be very difficult to get down in two from there for a par four. But they are both at least on the putting surface of these greens, which we'll repeat, were cut to five thirty seconds of an inch and then rolled last night. They're the leaders, Nicholas and Simons even. Trevino and Rosberg, one behind, two behind. Archer, Nichols, Gay Brewer, the former Masters champion, and Jim Colbert. Yep. A wonderfully exciting afternoon. Jim Moore, Pennsylvania. Byron Nelson, yes. Well, you know, one of the reasons why they might be coming up a little short there, the wind is switching around just a little bit, and also just over that green is a long grass and water again, and they didn't want to be sure that they didn't go too far at this point. Of course, I know they want to get closer than that, but they get become a little conservative at this point. Okay, well, the United States Open is, of course, the national championship, but it's only one of nine competitions conducted by the USGA. USGA also conducts eight other national championships for women amateurs, for women professionals, for public courts players, with the crowd applauding the leaders as they come up, for senior men and senior women, and for junior girls and junior boys. The USGA is concerned with all golfers and with all of golf in such varied capacities as writing the rules and with the development of hardy turf grass to make the game more enjoyable to play, establishing a nationwide system of handicapping, establishing a code of amateur status, and ruling on the legality of clubs and balls through the Implements and Ball Committee. The USGA is a very busy office. And a well-occupied young man is 31-year-old Jack Nicholas. Gee, it seems like yesterday he was the boy wonder, doesn't it? Now he's the well-established veteran, challenging to be the greatest golfer of all time. And with him is a new face. That's the way of life, isn't it? But back to 12 now. This is Bobby Nichols getting his third shot to long putt, which should break just a little bit to the right. And it'll come down here very fast. Look at this. It'll just keep coming and coming and coming. And breaks off to the right. And he's left himself a putt he'll have to consider for the par four. It's only a couple of feet, but again, all of the short ones here are tough. Now back to the 11th green and young Jim Simons. Toe-headed youngster, 
just three years ago, he was up with us on our tower helping to keep score at the U.S. Amateur in Oakmont. He missed the cut that year and uh, came up and worked with us. So, so Duke Keller, who's keeping score for us today and who will be on the golf team at Duke University next year, perhaps will follow a precedent. You never know. We mentioned the wicker baskets before. You don't see it right at the moment, but they're a characteristic of Marion, and there's actually a rule. If anybody should ever stick the ball in the wicker basket and it would stay, you get to put it on the lip of the cup. But as far as we can find out, it's never happened. Now, Simons is on the left. Nichols is on the right. Nichols playing one hole ahead of Simons. He is two shots behind him. Simons putt, the long one is for a birdie, the shorter one of Nichols, but not an automatic one is for a par four. Jim Simons really in that sit down in the chair position, perhaps more than anybody I've ever seen. That's on his longer shots too, as well as his putting. And here it comes. It's a good putt. He'll settle for a par four here. Meanwhile, Bobby Nichols is still standing over his. Just as deliberate as, as Jack Nicholas is, Bobby Nichols. Making sure of the par four, and he's got it. He remains two over and two behind the leaders. The leaders are Nicholas and Simons. One stroke back, Trevino, Rosberg, and Colbert. Two strokes back, Brewer and Nichols. There's the wicker basket we were talking about. Lee Trevino now has this for a birdie three. If he makes it, he's tied for the lead with Nicholas and Simons. He is wearing that same red shirt that he wore when he won the Open on the last day at Rochester. Often does that when he's in contention on the final round. Trevino's tied for the lead. It's the Mexican-American, the youngster from Pittsburgh, and the great Jack Nicholas, the Golden Bear from Ohio, and a triple tie for the lead. But now Nicholas can break it open. For the moment, he can take the lead if he makes this birdie putt on the 11th hole. And the crowd is really divided in its sympathies now. And back at the 12th green, they're hollering, go Lee, go Lee. But they're hollering, go Simons and go Jack back on the 11th. That is when they're not putting. The stick being tended by the caddy. He'll take it out when Jack putts. That's compulsory. You have no choice unless you're off the putting surface. If you're off the surface even a couple inches. You can leave it in. Here it comes. Here it comes. Yeah. Oh! Nope. Of such small distances are U.S. Open championships made. Jack Nicholas, with a par four, will remain tied for the lead with Jim Simons and Lee Trevino, but Simons has yet to make his putt here on the 11th. Okay, Jack is in. Jim Simons first played in the U.S. Open when he was 16 years old. That was at Baldestrol in 1967 when Jack Nicholas beat out another young amateur named Marty Fleckman, Fleckman on the final day. However, Marty took 80 that day. There is no sign that Jim Simons is going to do that. On today's round, he is three over par. If he pars in from here, he'll have 73 and a, at the very least a new amateur record for 72 holes in the open. The record is... 282 set by Nicholas, remember, 11 years ago. This is for a par four. Okay, the triple tie for the lead remains. Let's go to Bill Fleming at 17. All right, thank you. This is Bob Rosberg on the 17th hole. This is 224 yards, and his ball comes up, is on the putting surface. And he has quite a little mound to go over, 20 feet. And out back to the 13th, and we're taking a look at the group of Archer. Right now, it's Bobby Nichols on the 13th hole. This is a little dinky hole, 129 yards, just a really a little wedge shot but to a postage stamp of a green. Bobby Nichols. Up it comes, it's just a little bit long, just in the first cut. You can see Trebino's ball there to the left, and we'll take a look at his shot by videotape and how he got there. Here it is. Just hitting a very delicate shot over the front bunkers. 
Remember, this is the 13th hole. Up it comes, runs just a little, and then that backspin, which was so advantageous to him at 12, doesn't quite hold at 13. Jim? All right, Bill. This is the tunnel we were talking about, a tunnel of trees back to the 12th tee on this 405-yard par-4 hole. I almost remind you of looking into the tunnel on the race course at Monte Carlo. A different mood, but just as much of a problem for these men. There's the tunnel effect of the trees. They must come through there, and uh, Ronnie Rife, for one golfer, hit that tr the trees on the right this morning. It's not that that's difficult to do. Then you must carry a creek that's 210 yards away, and to reach the fairway, it's 220 yards. Today, you want to favor the left side of the fairway, so you'll have a better shot into the pin placement. However, there are bunkers if you go way up on the left side, which Larry Hinson did a while ago. Jack Nicklaus has the wind kind of quartering, but assisting him, if anything. It might make the ball drift off to the right a little bit. And people even wave in back of people fighting for the U.S. Open, don't they? They are not on the course, as a matter of fact. Boy, Jack does take a long time over that ball, doesn't he? Here it comes. And he's left. He he has a problem. He's way up in there. He may be as far as, not as far as the 11th fairway, I don't think. I think he has caught sand over there. We can't quite see that, that bunker. It's up on top of that knoll. They call it the elephant over there. So Jack Nicholas in a triple tie for the lead has a problem. Whether it is actually in the sand or not, we're double checking. Our first information is that it is in the sand. Now Jim Simons. Simons, who has shown just tiny signs of cracking up to here, has now seen that even the mighty man with whom he is paired can make a mistake. And now if Jim Simons, despite all the wig wagging behind him, can hit a straight tee shot, he may be able to be in a commanding position. I think that's going to be okay. He's right on the fairway in perfect position. Just right. Byron, he's on that left side. Couldn't be much better than that, could it? No, it certainly couldn't, Jim, because that pin cutting that back right and up on top of that green, you, you must need that whole green to play a good shot to. Well, now, we got more information. This dog here just picked up somebody's ball on the 16th green and ran away with it. I don't know whose ball it was yet. But that'll be an interesting rolling. They'll replace it, that's all. But uh, they may replace the dog, too. <laughs> it was Ray Floyd ball, and Ray is very much in, con well, he was in contention. He's been falling back to four over now. Let's go up to Bill Fleming. Okay, Jim. And now we're taking a look at Lee Trevino lining up his putt on the 13th. He's got it again. That rascal has been trained. Well, the ruling here is that you have to putt the dog. <laughs> I'm, of course, not serious. And now we must get serious <laughs> as we go back to Trevino at 13. This is for a birdie. He has made three straight threes in the first three rounds. That's beautiful. Oh. <laughs> what can you add to that? One dimple on the golf ball prevented it from dropping into the cup. He would have taken over the lead. So Trevino remains even. And here it is again. Really unbelievable. So now Bobby Nichols. <coughs> Bobby Nichols looking over this one. This will be for his par three. Bobby two over for the championship.
This is the fourth perfect day of weather for this championship, the 71st USGA Open, the third one to be played here at Marion. Olin Dutra won in 1934, Ben Hogan in a playoff at 50. It's still a big question as to who the champion will be in 71. This is for a par three for Nichols. Bobby was quite short on his first one, as you saw. Beautiful. Here's Bobby Rosberg at 17. This is for a birdie, too, but it is just about a foot and a half short. He had to come over a mound. He missed a little putt, just like this one. Remember two years ago at Houston? A three-footer that would have tied him with Orville Moody. He missed it on the 72nd hole of that championship. Wound up in a three-way tie for second that year. Now let's go to Jim McKay. Well, we see Jack Nicholson's ball now already. All right, he has a terrible problem. He's in the sand behind a tree, and he's going to have to play it out safe, it looks like. But let's see now. He's looking it over again. You see the tree problem there. This is a par four hole, remember. Pin placement on the right side, and he is in a left fairway bunker. Hooked his tee shot over there. In a triple tie for the lead with the amateur Jim Simons and the former champion Lee Trevino. Well, he hit it under those branches and he's hit himself a great shot. He's on the green. Jack Nicholas has hit a tremendous shot out of the sand. Dave, how'd you like that? Jim, that was an absolutely fantastic Ooh. shot he just played there, and I'm sure he's really happy. I was surprised he took enough club to get to those traps off the tee. Thought maybe he might go with a three-wood off the tee there. Yeah. That was some great shot he just played. Well, he had to stay under the branches <laughs> of that tree. He was on a kind of a side hill lie in the sand, and he's got himself a chance at a birdie three. Now, let's see if that shakes at all Jim Simons, who hit a perfect tee shot to the left center of the fairway. Jack Nicholas had to come, oh, he had to come a good 160 yards from that bunker, didn't he, Dave? About 165 from the first yep. part of that bunker there. Well, he was up about five yards in it, right? Here's Simons in that exaggerated sit-down position. And here's the shot. It looks pretty good if he's got enough. Great shot. Oh, see the way it pulls back off the green. And just into the fringe of the rough headed right for the flag stick. Whether he'll putt that or chip it, we'll be seeing here in a moment. And our final round coverage of the U.S. Open Golf Championship from the famed Marion Golf Club in Ardmore, Pennsylvania will continue following this message. Okay, here's Lee Trevino on the 14th, our tied for the lead along with uh, the amateur Jim Simons and Jack Nicholas. And Dave Marr, he's in pretty A number one position. He's absolutely perfect, and I've, every shot's going to count so much now. It's just a great shot he hit. And now we're back at the 12th, Jim McKay here, and I'd like to get a comment from Dave Marr, who was a contender here, remember, played here for the first two days on this um, shot of Jim Simons, but I think maybe Nicholas is going to hit first. Jack is further away. It doesn't matter whether who's on the green or not. It's whoever is further from the flag stake, and it was close. Looks like it's Jack. Now, he has got himself a putt, I'll tell you. He could make a birdie here, but he's got a putt of about oh, 27 to 30 feet, and it's going to break to the right. There's your leaderboard, Nicholas Simons Trevino, one shot behind Rosberg and Colbert, two shots behind Nichols and Archer. But Jack's putt is going to take a big break to the right, and it's going to come down there so fast that you won't believe it. There, that stare that Jack gets. Ultimate concentration. Looks like he could bore holes in a fence with that look. Twice the Open champion. Nine years ago, and just four years ago at Baldus Roll when he set the scoring record of 275 that was tied the next year by Lee Trevino, with yep. whom he is tied right now. Yes, Byron? 
This is a putt that he could hold for birdie, as you said, but if he ever got aggressive on this putt at least, so that green from that area where he is, he could putt it six feet past that hole like nothing. He sure could, and a number of people have done exactly that today from here. You saw how softly he struck that. And here comes the break. And it's still going, 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 going. And he's left himself with that for a par four. Now how delicately can you stroke a putt? It even brings a wag of the head from Nicholas. He'll have to make careful of that. That's about a two-footer coming back. Now Simons is just in the fringe. Dave, how about a comment on this one? Jim, when you have a shot like that uh, Jimmy's about to play there, it's sort of unique, really. You only get shots like that in a major championship when they leave the fringe around the green very tall. Looks like he's got a putter out. There's almost no uh, shot that you can really play. You sort of have to invent one because the tall grass is directly behind the ball. And as you can, and there you see Lee Trevino getting ready to play his second shot at 14 here. Lee's hit just perfect, perfect drive. He's in the right side of the fairway. Now we're back to Jimmy, and there you see the lie. A very good look at it. It's just in that grass, and he's going to use the putter. We'll see if that's a good idea. Now, he's coming up at the hole. He's really got a more secure shot at it than Jack had way up on the top of that slick green. Probably rolled pretty good coming out of there. There it is, and he's left it short. So you're coming uphill there. They each will have about the same length of putt from a slightly different direction. Let's go up course now to Chris Schenkel. And it's a 72nd hole for Bob Rosberg. Only one shot off uh, a four-way tie for the lead. He's on the 18th fairway. Here's his shot to the green. Into the wind. On the green. And hole high. Okay, Bud Palmer. That is Lee Trevino, his second up here to the 14th. He's a tie with a lead with Simons. Oh, and look at that shot by Lee. Tie with Simons and Nicholas. And Lee Trevino, who tied it up at the 12th with a birdie, has about, about an eight-foot tricky downhill curler. Very good shot. Jim McKay? This is Jack Nicholas on 12 for a par four. He has it. Now, Jim Simons must make his pressure on the youngster again. Nicholas at age 31, Simons at 21. He's never done anything like this before, except for that recent sudden showing in the British Amateur, where he went to the finals and was defeated by Steve Melnick. However, the competition there was not Jack Nicholas, and it wasn't Lee Trevino, and it wasn't Marion. It wasn't the US Open. Trying to move some people out of his line of sight there. You know, the, the gallery rings the green. I think it's a, I'll tell you, it's a movie cameraman that he's moving back there. Now he's satisfied. There you see the putting grip of Jim. Now this one, same length as Nicholas is almost to the inch, less than two feet. Okay. Let's go to Frank Gifford. Jim Colbert, second shot here at 15. And Colbert has pulled that shot to about 40 feet from the pin. A very difficult pin placement here at 14. As you see, Colbert would have had to come over the edge of that bunker. He has about 14 feet to work with. There are leaders, three-way tie, Nicholas Simons, Trevino. As you see, Jim Colbert won back of those leaders along with Bob Rosberg. Jim Colbert who on Friday had a share of the lead, along with Bob Erickson, as we go back to Bill Fleming at 13. All right, this is the little, tiny 129-yard hole that demands just the ultimate in finesse. That's really the only word you can use in describing this par three. 
and it kind of sets you up for the finishing holes that follow. Jack Nicklaus has to be very careful here. He uses a wedge, has used it on all three rounds. Jack has made three threes here. Simons, curiously enough, has made two threes and a birdie. Now the pin itself is over on the right side just 20 feet from the right edge and just 18 feet from the back. And I, I don't have to tell you what kind of a crowd this is here. It's been just absolutely marvelous. It's the first time in history of the United States Open that we've had a sellout. They had to restrict the number of tickets, 14,000, because of the small acreage, only 126 acres, here in Ardmore, Pennsylvania. And now Jack Nicholas on the 13th. Three-way tie for the lead, remember. Very carefully hits it. And it comes back with just a little backspin. He's above the pin. Now let's go to Bud Palmer. This is Bobby Nichols. I have to be very quiet. He's directly below us. About a 35-footer. It'll go uphill and break right to left. He's two strokes off the lead. Back to Bill Fleming. Jimmy Simons getting ready for his shot here on the par 3, 13. He had his birdie here yesterday. On his way to the lowest ground in the tournament, a 65. Looks beautiful, James. He doesn't like it. For some reason, and there it is. It was just too long. Hold it right there. It could go down into the bunker. I don't think it went in. The branch prevents me from seeing it. Nope, it's okay. It's not in the trap, but he's going to have a difficult stance, to say the least. Yeah. All right, bud, back to you at 14. All right, here is Lee Trevino with about an 8 to 10 footer curling putt. It'll break right left to right. And we have Bob Rosberg on the 18th, who is... Both are shooting for birdies. Rosberg has led the open a couple of times. We mentioned he almost won it when he missed a three-foot putter tied for the lead. That is with Orville Moody when he won it. These are both for birdies, as I mentioned. And Lee Trevino on the right, if he sinks it, as Rosberg goes for his birdie, he misses. If Lee makes this one, he will go into the lead. That is very fast there, bud. He will just have to touch that ball ever so lightly. You got to paint him like Gauguin or Rubens here. Is it? Is it? It is! Uh, Jim Simons and Jack Nicklaus. This. <laughs> and here at the 18th hole for a par for Bob Rosberg. Disaster, a bogey five. He came to the hole. Only one over par, one shot at the time off the lead, but now with Trevino taking it over, instead of a three-way tie, Rosberg has finished the championship at three over par. John Miller is also three over. Here's Frank Gifford. And Jim Colbert's birdie attempt here at 15 from about 28 feet. And Colbert will have a considerable putt to maintain par here at 15. Colbert at one over par. As we go now to Bud Palmer. Bobby Nichols. Here he is for a par. He's three strokes off the lead now. This is a tricky putt. Quite a bit of break. And they're just like glass. They're lightning fast, these greens. Oh, you see what I mean? And now let's go to Bill Fleming. All right, the drama is beginning to unfold here now as we come down to the final holes. As Nichols taps this one in for the bogey, here is Jim Simons with this desperate shot, his second on a par three. He's above the hole. The adage at Marion is, if you're above the hole, you're in trouble. Really a marvelous shot from there. Giving it a chance to 
preserve the call. Frank Gifford. Jim Colbert. This putt for par here at 15. And the potato masher works for Jim Colbert as he remains at one over par, two shots off the lead by Lee Trevino. Jim Colbert. As we go now, back to Bill Fleming. All right, Jack Nicholas. now, having seen what Jim Simons did on that beautiful recovery shot, Jack is on the putting surface, and he is going to be coming down also to the hole. There's a beautiful view of his 12-footer. That's what Jack has shot so far, two subpar rounds. There were only 23 subpar rounds going into today's final round. Only six yesterday. This is for a birdie. He could go into a tie with Trevino for the lead. just a little bit too far outside. I don't know whether that is readable there, Byron or Dave, but... Uh, I think that that putt is pretty straight. I think he just rolled it just a little bit more to the right than what he would like to have uh, done, uh, Bill. Mm -hmm. Not right. much break from where he was. And certainly uh, not it's an easy putt here for Jim Simons. As good as they are, they don't hit exactly on the line they want to each time, unfortunately. This little tiny green, very, very, very small. Smallest one on the golf course. But the greens are very true. They're triple cut, by the way, to remove any green at all. This is to preserve Jim Simon's par at 13. He and Nicholas have fallen a stroke back of Lee Trevino. Breathes a sigh of relief. <laughs> so he's still in the car. Young, boyish looking college student. Not succumbing to this pressure cooker that is the U.S. Open. And now Nicholas, for his par. Him, and they both are still one stroke behind Lee Trevino. Let's go to Frank Gifford. And we look at the tee shot of Lee Trevino, which took place just moments ago here at 15. Lee Trevino charging, playing dangerously here at 15. Remember, out of the bounds on left, and Trevino has flirted with the out of bounds and hit an absolutely perfect drive here at 15. He will have an opening to the flag not having to go over more than just the corner of the bunker, as you see. As we pull back, there is the wicker basket. So Trevino in good shape as we look at our leaders. And ABC Sports continues with this exclusive color coverage of the prestigious U.S. Open Golf Championship following this message. Under par, Jack Nicholas at even par, Jim Simons even, Jim Colbert one over, Bob Rosberg at two over. Lee Trevino charged up and playing dangerously on 15. And here is the shot, the second shot of Lee Trevino just moments ago. The shot carrying long and about 22 to 25 feet above the pen where Lee Trevino will have a rather deadly putt coming back. 
Now to Bud Palmer. On the 14th tee, Jim Simons. This hasn't been a particularly good hole for Jim Simons, the amateur, because he has two bogeys and one par. But it's been a great hole for Jack Nicklaus, who has birdied it twice and parred it once. Jim Simons. That was some par he just made back at 13, bud. Jim Simons. Oh, you saw his ball disappear into the rough. That's Jim Colbert, Henry Longhurst. That's uh, Jim Colbert, we just caught playing his second to the 60. It's a great big green, and we wait it, and there it is on his left, leaving him a putt of at least 25 yards, and he'll do very well to get down in two more. That's Jim Colbert. One over. Only two ahead of him, only three ahead of him. Trevino, one under. Nicholas and Simons, even. Now we go back to Frank Gifford. As we watch Lee Trevino walk up to take a look at the distance he's going to have to cover with this putt. It's downhill and it's fast, Dave Marr. Dave Marr and I were watching last night, and I don't know whether you believe this or not, but Bob Erickson and Ron Reef were actually practicing their putting on the concrete outside of the motel where they're staying to give you an idea of the speed. Lee Trevino looking for his second U.S. Open Championship co-holder of the U.S. Open record along with Jack Nicklaus at 275 and this is Bobby Nichols and this is what we had mentioned earlier the bunker that guards the green here at 15 has caught many a golfer today Bobby Nichols will have about 18 feet to work with Nichols at three over par yes David if you hit enough club there you do what Trevino did and if you pick you know you almost have to hit a perfect shot if you're going to try to make a birdie and that's what caught Bobby there and you see Bobby Nichols with not much green to work with carrying well past the pin about 20 feet Bobby Nichols out of the Firestone Country Club in Akron, Ohio, a great player in major tournaments. And we have some U.S. Open here today. Lee Trevino now looking over his putt. We've only had six birdies recorded here at 15 today. Again, the placement. Proof that the back nine can be had, though. Bob Charles, who came in with a 68 today, tied the lowest nine-hole score of the U.S. Open. 30 on the back nine for Bob Charles, so much can happen here. And here is the record which they will not break here today. A record that is co-held by this man, Lee Trevino, in 1968 at Rochester. Lee with one tournament win this year at Memphis, Danny Thomas. This putt will be just about straight in, I would estimate, Dave. And Frank, it is so fast going down that hill. You just He's just going to, I'm sure, just try to get it close to the hole because I feel like uh, Lee's smart enough to know if he can get the clubhouse with 279, he'll be the, the winner here. This is really fast. For three at 15, Lee Trevino. It's on his way. And it will go by. And Lee Trevino will have perhaps five and a half to six feet coming back as we go quickly to Bud Palmer. And we have Jim Simons hitting, changing clubs here. There he is. He's deep in the rough here, and it's awfully deep, Dave, getting out of there, isn't it? Well, it just depends on what kind of lie he has over there. He changed clubs once. I'm sure, you know, he's, he's got to try to take enough club to get to the green at this point, but it uh, certainly looks deep over there where he is. They and he's just got no shot, really. But he just try to make a four the best way you can here. The gentleman watching there with his hands on his hips is Phil Strubing, president of the USGA. Amateur Jim Simons, one behind. And he doesn't get it onto the fairway. Now let's go to Henry Longhurst. Here's the 16th green. We saw Jim Colbert come up there, leaving himself 25 to 30 yards. Cutting up that very curious instrument he uses. 
A pretty good putt from there, but you still got to hold it, and it's back to Bud Palmer. There is Jack Nicholas for his second. He's in the right rough. See the trap? The little white, you see, is one of the many traps on that side. Jack, one stroke off the bead. And remember, he's birdied this hole twice and part at once. He's got a lot better angle at the flag than Jim Sammons did, plus he was quite a bit longer, but he's uh, got a little bit easier shot, I would say. And he does need a birdie. It's right at the flag, coming up. But he's left himself, ooh, it's going back down to that undulation there. Rolls back, and he has, what, about 20, 25 feet, I'd say, Dave. Yeah. Now let's go to Frank Gifford. At 15, where Lee Trevino is lining up a putt of about five and a half feet. Lee needs this for his par to maintain his lead. Oh, so delicate for Lee Trevino. Trevino with that colorful action as he gets his par here at 15 to remain our leader. And happy he is. As we go now back to Bud Palmer. And here is Jim Simons, his third shot here on the par 4 14th. He caught the heavy rough. He's still in the lighter rough now, about 100 yards away from the pin. He's still got a bad angle to come into the hole, but he, he needed to get out to the fairway there so he could put something on the ball. It's very hard to get any spin on the ball out of this tall grass. He's played just great today. He ought to be very proud no matter what happens. And Jim Colbert birdied 16, rather bogeyed 16. Oh. Well, you can see his ball just trickle to the right in the shadows there, and it, uh, as you can see, it didn't have very much spin on it. He's about hole high, maybe 30 feet away, putting for a par four. Jim Sammons, who at the moment is tied with Nicholas, even par, and one shot behind Lee Trevino. There's Jack coming up to uh, mark his ball. Jim Simon is three over for this round. Jack Nicholas is one over for the round. He's looking at the leaders right there. The leader in the clubhouse is Bob Rosberg, who shot a 69 at plus two. At plus three is John Miller, who had a 70. At plus four, Bob Charles Ray Floyd. And the applause is for Jim Simon, who is still looking at Jack Nicholas, who's going up above to take a look at this hole. And he's with, with the baskets. Here are some of the other scores for the 72 hole total. Jim Masario is a very fine amateur. At Wicker Basket, did that bother you when you played here with not having a flag on top and not being able to see that the, uh, which way the wind was blowing or well, that, not? That's one point, Bud, because there's, there's no way you can tell exactly which way the wind is blowing. Those baskets don't uh, move around too much. Let's just see what's happening with Henry at 16. There's a 16 T and the leader, Lee Trevino. They were going to tear this course apart, and he's the only one under par, and he's only one under par. Lee Trevino, the leader. Oh, and he's in the fairway. Probably more important at this hole than any other that you should be on the fairway because of the big trees guarding each side of the green. Now we go back to 14. That is Jack Nicholas looking over his putt, along with Jim Simons on the right in the red shirt. There are very many subtle undulations in this green. It's somewhat like a great looking gal in one of these new mod dresses. You don't know exactly what you're seeing and what you don't see. I thought Geraldine had the answer for that. <laughs> and uh, we have Ben Crenshaw with us here who shot a, a 289 total today. And Ben, what kind of a player is uh, Jim Simons? Jim Simons is a very straight player. He's, that's why he's done well all this week. He's kept in the fairway. I've played a lot with him, he's very consistent. That's why he's done well this week. Ben Crenshaw, a very fine 19-year-old amateur, shot 73 today, came in at 289 or plus 9, as did Gary Player and Don January. 
He needs this for a par, and it's a long one. About 30 feet uphill, he has to go down, up, and then the ball's going to break right to left for his par. A big break, too, Ben. That's not going to do it. That's not going to do it. Very close, that break at the hole. Uh, this hole has been most unfriendly to Jim Simons. This will be his third bogey in four rounds. But it's been most friendly to Jack Nicholas as Jim Simons is marking his ball because Jack birdied this hole in his first two rounds. And he had 69 and 72. With a 68 yesterday, he parted. Remember, they're both one stroke behind our leader, Lee Trevino. Now let's go to Bill Fleming. All right, this is the 17th tee, elevated as we look back from the green. Jim Colbert with an iron. He's bogeyed this hole the last two times he's played it after a birdie on the first round. And he catches the bunker on the right side, a golfer's right, and has a, a considerably difficult shot. All right, bud. This is a little tap in for Jim Simons, who now goes plus one. That is a bogey, two strokes off our leader, Lee Trevino. And now Jack Nicholas. Jack has a putt of about 35 feet. You saw it roll down into that subtle undulation, which you can't see on the screen here, but it sort of goes, pierces the middle of the screen. So Hill's ball is going to come uphill and fairly straight, I'd say, wouldn't you, Dave? Might die a little bit at the cup. Yeah, but the guys have been playing a little bit too much break from this side, and most of them have missed it left. I'd be interested to see just how Jack figures it out here. Jack tied this tournament up. He started two strokes behind Simons at the second hole, which he birdied and Simons bogeyed. And at the fifth hole, he had a double bogey. Simons bogeyed it again. Simons went out ahead again. But now Lee Trevino is our leader, and Jack Nicholas with this putt can put it into a flat tie. That's Jim Simons, you can see at the same time. Played beautifully today, the amateur. What pressure. Needs a birdie, bud. Is it enough? Straight, but he's left himself about a two-footer for his tap-in, for his par to remain one stroke off our leader, Lee Trevino. You know, we're about due for a playoff here in the, in the <laughs> U.S. Open. We haven't had one since 66. In fact, in the 71 Opens they've had, there have been 24 playoffs, so it's quite frequent. And if we have one, it'll be 4.30 to 5.30 Eastern Daylight Time. And, of course, next Sunday, we'll also have the Women's Open coming from Erie, Pennsylvania. So a lot more golf on ABC. We have the British Open, the American Golf Classic, and the Amateur. Jack Nicklaus. For a par. Rolls it in to remain one stroke behind our leader, Lee Trevino. And who said they're going to pair old Marion apart. They certainly haven't. Only one fellow under par so far. And ABC Sports continues to bring you the finest in professional golf. For the slight pause here in the action at Marion Golf Club, we'll take this opportunity to bring you an important message. Young Jim Simon standing on the very dangerous tee here at 15. Jack Nicholas has hit a superb drive, splitting the middle in perfect position. And this is Simons, out of bounds on the left, the fairway, flanked by bunkers on the right, deep rough on the right. And you heard the gallery, they love the shot. As we go to Henry Longhurst. And the 16th hole, and Lee Trevino, there he is, playing his second from the perfect position from a long drive. Only about a five iron, double tiered green. Flag on the top level, he seems cheerfully to like that one. And I don't wonder that he does. And it's a 15 footer for a birdie for Lee Trevino, attacking all these flags on the way home and leading by one. Now to Frank Gifford. And we'll take a look at the drive of Jack Nicholas. This took place a few moments ago. Absolutely a superb drive, right in the middle, where Jack will be able to cut the bunker that guards the pin here at 15. As we go now to Bill Fleming. All right, we're looking at Jim Colbert on the 17th hole. He has put his tee shot in the trap. He's blasted out, and this one here 
about a six or seven footer to preserve the par. Break right to left. He bogeyed the last hole to go plus two. So he really needs this one. Using that new style putter. Has a black streak right down the middle of it. Got it. Played it just perfect. So Colbert preserves the par. Still three strokes behind charging Lee Trevino. Henry? Now we're back to the 16th green. Trevino marking his ball there. The only man under par at the moment and only one under at that. You'd have to wait while Bobby Nichols puts a 30-yarder right up the slope. It's very fast green. We'll go back to Frank Gifford for a moment. We're out in the fairway. You see Jim Simons. There are the two tee shots. Simons coming up, I would presume, to check off his marker, measuring the distance to the pin. Jim Simons, who has now playing in his third U.S. Open, 21 years old. This is the shot. And Dave Marr, most of the golfers, I believe, have been using anywhere from a nine to a wedge. Although Simons is not that far out. Simons has his club selected. From about 155 yards, Jim Simons at one over par now, trading Lee Trevino, who's one under par. It is right on line. Absolutely a beautiful shot, Jim Simons. He'll have a putt for a bird of about eight feet. And you talk about pressure. This young man has had the pressure, and he's not cracked at all. Now to Henry Longhurst. And we come back to the 16th, where we left Lee Trevino with his 15-footer. And we go back to Frank Gifford a minute. And this is Jack Nicholas setting up for his second shot. From about 145 to 150 yards is Jack Nicholas. He needs a birdie. And he's right on line. And a little long is Jack Nicholas, about 30 feet as we go to Henry Longhurst. And now he has the putt, the 15 footer for a birdie for Lee Trevino. It's a very good one. Just fell away just at the very last moment. Looked to be in all the way and a very fine putt, but it didn't make it. Just about two feet past, if that, but nothing is stone dead on these icy greens. You take the very greatest care. Is for his par four. We've only had uh, four threes here out of 56 players. This to stay one under for Lee Trevino. In the middle, well done, Trevino. He stays one under with two to play. There are only two behind him now, Nicholas and Simon. And go back to Frank Gifford and see them. And here comes Jim Simons onto the green where he has just hit an absolutely superb second shot. We'll remind you again, as you can see, the pin is cut 14 feet from the edge of the green, 18 feet from that bunker. He flirted with disaster all the way on that second shot and has left himself about an eight foot putt. Trailing Lee Trevino by two shots, Jack Nicholas. Now walking up to where his second shot Made the ball mark, he repairs the ball mark, and now we'll survey a putt of about 30 feet. Jack Nicholas, who has won just about 
everything there is to win in golf on the record as saying he would like to win the most of all the major tournaments that mark of course of course held by Bobby Jones Nicholas along with Lee Trevino has a share of the US Open record 275 set in, at Baltus Raw 1967. Let's go now to Bill Fleming. And the 17th hole is what confronts Lee Trevino right now. And there you see it from the back of the green up through the wilderness of gorse, trees, high grass, up to the elevated tee. Now, uh, yesterday, Lee took a five wood here. And now you look at uh, Nicholas surveying that putt as we watch now as Trevino up on the tee has an iron. He had a bogey four here yesterday. He said this is the most non-birdieable hole on the golf course. To substantiate that, there have been only two birdies here today. So I would imagine the strategy would be just simply play for the par with a one-stroke lead. Oh, it's a great shot. It's a little long, though. Didn't hold. Went off in the rough. Right on line. But the green just a little high. <laughs> Said I hit a three and I can't hit a four there. All right, Frank. Jack Nicholas, who has surveyed his putt. This would give Jack Nicholas a share of the lead. Here at 15 from about 30 feet. Putt will work just a little bit left at the hole. It's on its way and slippery. And there's that little left. And Jack Nicholas has gone well by about five feet, maybe six feet. And again, the speed of the greens here at Marion. Now young Jim Simon. And I think perhaps another amateur's father, Ben Crenshaw, the amateur from the University of Texas, his father maybe put everything in perspective when he told Ben about the Marion course. He said it's old, it should be loved and honored, and if you get out of line, you'll get whopped. Jim Simons, who has stood up fantastically well under great pressure. Playing his final round with the man who many think is the finest golfer in the world at this moment, Jack Nicklaus. This youngster still not out of this tournament. There's the gallery standing around and watching this young man from about eight feet. This for a three at 15. A little left at the hole and Jim Simons has gone by the hole about two feet maybe 20 inches he will mark and Jack Nicholas will have this putt to maintain par and one shot off the lead of Lee Trevino who is in trouble at 17 Jack Nicholas looking for his third US Open Championship the Masters, he's won three times, 63, 65, 66. Truly dedicated golfer. The members at Wingfoot of Mamaroneck, New York can recall Jack Nicklaus years ago, arriving on a rainy day when even the members would not go on the course. Jack Nicklaus on his honeymoon, his wife Barbara holding the umbrella, playing 18 holes. That's the dedication that has made this man the great golfer he is. Now from about six feet for par. <laughs> Fantastic. 
fantastic pressure cut by Jack Nicholas for his four here at 15 to maintain his one shot deficit to Lee Trevino. And now no easy putt for young Jim Simons as we go quickly to Bill Fleming. All right, as Jim Simons is placing his ball, you're looking at Lee Trevino who has gone a little bit long on 17. He went over yesterday and made a bogey from just a little bit farther out. But this is one of the things he does best. Oh, it's beautifully done. Sure. Only a two-footer there for his par at 17. And let's go back to Frank. Jim Simons needs this putt to remain one over par and well within contention, about 20 inches. Jim Simons refuses to crack, getting his difficult par here at 15. The twosome of Simons and Nicholas now move over to the tee at 16, and this youngster has put on some kind of performance. We go now to Henry Longhurst at 16. Now we come to the 16th, and as the model of the hole, we start nearest to us. It's called the quarry hole, and he must drive down in play. Above all, at this hole, he must be in play. You can see those big banks of trees, and as the tee, we'll start back there again. And there's the driving area down there, downhill, that is. And the trees on the left, and they're very tall ones. And trees on the right, also tall. So if you go too far either side, you can't make it over the trees. There's the quarry, and a lot of wilderness in it. And now we go back to Chris Schenkel. And for Jim Colbert, who's been near the lead, this is a putt to gain a stroke. That was for three. Now he'll have this at least a three-footer coming back for his par four to remain two over for the uh, tournament. Okay, Henry. I went back to the tee live of the 16th, the quarry hole. Even Jack Nicholas can let fly at this hole. Downhill to the quarry. simply not to be on the fairway. Even Nicholas, I don't think, could hack out of the rough. And it's in the rough. It's in the rough. It'll have to be a good lie there, even for Nicholas, to get over the trees and over the quarry and up onto the second level of the green. Colbert got his par at 18, we're told. And Jim Simons. Colbert finishing two over par, 282, to take the lead with Rosberg. He's continuing to play his game, which is all that he can do. I think everybody will admire the performance of Jim Simons here under this very, very great pressure playing last. And we go to Bill Fleming. Lee Trevino getting ready for a very tense moment to preserve his par three at the 17th and to preserve his lead of one stroke. And he did it. He did it with grace. So Lee Trevino, who took the lead on the 68th hole, of this USGA championship, who made a fantastic putt at the 69th or the 15th, is now going to the 18th. Chris? And what a punishing hole the 18th is. 458 yards, par four, and trouble right off the tee. That's the driving area that you see there, and that's the tee, and this is the area where you must drive the ball to, right in the middle of the top. It's about 235 yards to the tee from there, and you see these bunkers around this green the green slopes up to the center and then from the center of the green to the back it slopes away from you it's a very critical hole and byron today we've had only one birdie three here 15 coming into today's final round that gives you a pretty good idea of just how difficult it is to not only get on the green but to get down well you never have a level lie off your second shot 
and the green slopes away from you and the pin is cutting kind of a little saucer today in the back left hand side of the green making it most difficult what a tiny slot to uh, send that ball Am through yes and it's uh, <laughs> heard lee say he's choking already so uh, <laughs> <laughs> choking been, with the one uh, shot lee he's been pretty loose all day he's uh <laughs> he says he's got to play and this other guy is choking. <laughs> he's playing, of course, with uh, Bobby Nichols, who is four over, four over on his round today. <laughs> this is the way that Lee loosens himself up a lot of time. If he does get tense, why, he starts kidding around, and it does get, loosen him up a little bit. He won't take much time. Never does. It's off to the uh, golfer's right. Well, huh? I didn't want to go left. There's the four caddy who has uh, marked just possibly on the fairway, and it'll be a testy. He will die. Few, he'll die a few deaths before he gets there because it's going to be a real long iron, or possibly a wood, to reach this green from where he is. So it makes a lot of difference whether or not he's just in the edge of that short cliff rub or whether or not he's in the fairway. Now back to Henry Longhurst. Now here's the 16th, and Jim Simons ideally placed right in the middle of it, and Jack Nicklaus away to his left, our right, obscured from us behind the green by the very big trees which he'll have to carry. Got a better hope, I suppose, than anybody in the field with his great strength to be able to get out of that rough and over the trees and over the quarry. Most people couldn't. But even he will have to take a chance. I think it's Jim Simons who's standing up so wonderfully well to play first. And there it is, looking over the quarry from the other side. And we look back from the back of that green. Jim Simons first. Two behind Trevino, one behind Nicholas. up to the top level of this two-level green and it has done so beautifully should stop just on the tiny fringe there you'll be able to take a putter from 20 to 25 feet for Jim Simons. Now this is rather a toss-up for Jack Nicholas. Depends very much on how he's lying. One can't see him at this stage of the championship not having a go at it. Now this is the critical shot up to now perhaps for Jack Nicholas. sound it made it seemed that he could get at the ball well enough and it's up on the top left hand level of the green just run over into the little fringe rough on left of the green and we'll return to this beautiful Marion Golf Club in Ardmore Pennsylvania and more final round action in the US Open after this brief message Forty seconds ago, Lee Trevino hit this shot, a fairway wood to the 72nd hole. Watch it. See he's coming away from for a better line of sight as he knows it's going to his right, bouncing across through the green and into the gallery at the feet of that young lady in the uh, blue culottes and the uh, red blouse. So from there, he'll need to get down to two to keep his one-shot lead. Back to Henry. Now back to the 16. Nicholas has just missed the green, if you remember. About a, a yard into the rough. And although it's only about 15 yards from the flag, you have to play a very delicate one here. We've seen so often that 
the ball apparently comes to rest and then just rolls on and sneaks on four or five feet by. Henry? Yes. Henry, this shot, you must be sure that you get the ball as quickly as possible. In other words, get as little grass between the face of the club and the ball as you possibly can, which means he should strike downward on the ball a little bit with a lofted club to just <coughs> kind of pop the ball out and let it trickle as softly as he possibly can. Now, he seemed to catch a lot more grass, exactly what you were saying, Byron. He caught much more grass, I'm sure, than he meant to, and it sort of dulled the shot, and it's left him five to six, perhaps six feet, short of the hole. And that was a very unsatisfactory one at this moment for Jack. And now that's how they stand. Torino is still the only man under par in this tournament, and only one under at that. Nicholas, we're watching now on the 16th even. Jim Simons, one behind. The leaders in the clubhouse at 282 are Bob Rosberg and Jim Colbert. Now, Simon's had a rather more satisfactory second than Nicholas. And he's about 20 feet and can take a putter. And here are some other scores coming up of the non-winners. <clears throat> well, 20 feet for Jim Simons. And what if he can hold this one? Oh, that's a bold one. It wants to hit the hole. See how they run by? Well, he had a go for it, and he's four feet by. He got a tremendous sympathetic cheer when he arrived on this green, and I've known that that's been going on all the way around. Whatever may happen to him, he's made a great showing, Jim Simon. <coughs> yes, this is a good six feet. Jack Nicholas after that rather unsatisfactory little pitch from the edge of the green. These will make 60 players we've seen here, only four threes. This one for a par four for Nicholas. cheering from I think the 18th puts him off and he has to start all over again. He smiles rather ruefully, must make it very happy. Do it all over again. And it's still six feet. Probably looks more by now. Sixteen. Oh, Trevino, still the only man under par, one under. Nicholas still even, getting away with that par there. Jim Simons with this one to stay at one over.
about four feet, this one from Jim Simons. Greens like glass. And across to Chris Schenkel. Very important third shot by Lee Trevino, 60 feet away from the flag. A delicate touch. Brings him within five and a half or six feet from the cup. This is the man that leads Jack Nicholas by one shot here on the 72nd hole. Trevino, who beat Nicholas at Oak Hill, tying a Nicholas record set earlier at 275. He beat Nicholas at Rochester by four shots. Now he leads him by one. Bobby Nichols is on the green in three. You'll recall he had to come out of the woods in the rough and put it across the fairway where he had to hit his third shot out of the deep grass. Back here in a moment, here's Bill Fleming. I'm sure that uh, when you ask Jack Nicholas about that putt, he'll say that was one of the biggest ones of his life. Kept him even, and here he is back on the elevated tee at 17. Only two birdies here today. Not too likely that uh, Jack will be quite as bold. He is being ke kept up to date on the um, other scores with the various scoreboards around the golf course, so he undoubtedly knows what he has to beat. He does not know, however, that uh, Trevino needs that tricky putt of his of six or seven feet to keep from making a bogey. Now the question here is, which club will he use, Byron? He's used two, three, and four irons so far. Well, I think he'll use a four iron today because he nets at this time the adrenaline's really going and he's charged up and he knows he must put the ball in the middle of the green, get the ball on the green. So I would think he'd use a four iron again today. 224 yards and a four iron. Can you believe that? Well, Bill, being downhill a little bit uh, shortens the hole a little bit as far as the flight of the ball is concerned. Earlier we saw Trevino take a three iron and go over. Only two holes to play. Nicholas one stroke back. Got it. Okay, hey, John. Beautiful, beautiful, Jack. Look, look. look. In the feet. It's long and it's in the bunker. However, it's in a pretty good spot. Actually, the players would rather be in the sand than they would be in the long rough around the green. You and I wouldn't, but they would. He wasn't particularly happy, Byron, with the way he hit the shot, I don't believe. Chris? Well, here's the big putt at the 72nd hole for the leader, Lee Trevino. This will be his fourth stroke, going to the opposite side of the cup now, Byron, to get a look from that side, looking back into a uh, very bright sun. Yes, Chris, uh, Lee has been uh, playing well all day, and of course, oh, not all day, I should say for a long time, really, since 1968, but... Uh, since 68 to now, he's won over $500,000, so it shows what a wonderful player he is in the open or otherwise. And this putt will go just a slight bit to his right, straight in if he hits it firm. Bill Fleming. All right, Jimmy Simons is up on the 71st hole, the 17th. We watch him hit his tee shot here. Jimmy, two strokes off the lead. Right in the green, will it hold? Yep. Rolls just off, but it is not in the high grass. Chris? To keep his lead and to be the only man under par in this championship, Lee Trevino needs to make this putt. And he was distracted, which does not often happen to Lee. No, something, uh, somebody dropped something over back of the green. Uh, sound like a barrel almost, Chris. I don't <laughs> but, uh, He's not easy to lose his composure. He'll take a practice swing now after being stopped. Getting ready again. This is for his par. Watch how still he keeps his head, Chris. Mm -hmm. Must do it on this putt. When it really means something, the more you must be still. If he makes this comeback putt, we have a tie. Only a little more than a foot 
It's a bogey five, which has been the story of this finishing hole. The 18th, ABC Sports and the USGA combined to bring you the finest in golf. We'll return to the Marion Golf Club in one moment. As Jack Nicholas comes to the 17th in the bunker, the crowd around the green apprising him of the fact that Lee Trevino has bogeyed the 72nd hole, brought a big grin to Jack's face. He now realizes that all he has to do is par out to tie for the championship and force a playoff, which ABC would be covering tomorrow, 4.30 to 5.30 Eastern Daylight Time. The crowd ringing the green here. There's just really nothing like an open. The air is just full of electricity of the pressure. People back on the 17th tee looking down, trying to get a glimpse of a historic moment. And there have been many here. And this could be one of them. Jack, if he could chip it in out of this sand trap, would take the lead. He wants to get it close, just close. The door has been opened very slightly for him. Delicately done. Hold on. And even though he glares, he acknowledges the crowd that it was indeed a fine shot, even though he has that five-footer facing him. Now Jimmy Simons, whose ball just rolled on the fringe, just short of the high grass, gives the wicker basket to his caddy and will look it over. Now just remember, Jim Simons is far from being out of this. If he should make it, he would go into a three-way tie for the lead. Trevino is finished for the day, missing his par putt on the 72nd hole by a fraction of an inch. Light break right to left. There's Trevino in the USGA tent at the 18th, checking his card as Jim Simons is far removed from that world. it in for a par three at 17. He's only one stroke away. Listen to this applause. Mm. He had to bite his lip a bit when it missed. And now Jack Nicholas, with one of the biggest putts of his life. This is to preserve the par, to stay tied with Trevino. Bill? Yes, Byron? I know that he no realizes uh, what he needs to do, and it gets most difficult at this point, and Jack has hold two of at the 15th and the 16th, hold two very long putts like this, what we consider long putts at this time, and I uh, know that he is been putting beautifully recently, so I know he's thinking about this very point himself. Can I make another one? Now the pictures speak for themselves. There's Lee Trevino looking anxiously down with Frank Hannigan, secretary of the USGA. Frank up there at the tent at the 18th, Trevino looking down the 18th, trying to get some idea of what's going on. This for the par to stay tied. He 
did it. Nerves of steel. And he breathes a big sigh. Well, that's it. That's 17 in the 71st hole. And now Jack Nicholas must birdie at 18 to go for the championship or tie with Trevino if he makes the par. And as he has done for the last five years in a row, this being the sixth in a row to call the final hole, Chris Schenkel. Thank you very much, Bill Fleming. A beautiful Marion. Out 458 yards from where Byron and I are observing. You see the elevated 18th tee, the bunkers of 17 to the right. This is a hole only today, one birdie, that by John Lister. And it was a bogey five by Lee Trevino that took him out of the lead, and he now shares it with the man in the lemon-colored shirt, Jack Nicholas. It was a tough break, the 18th also, for Bob Rosberg, who bogeyed it. He's in the clubhouse along with Jim Colbert at two over. Trevino and, of course, at even. Well, Chris, you can wonder what he's thinking about, but, of course, this man has, as Bill Fleming just said, nerves of steel in that last putt. He made it just like it was uh, out for a Sunday walk. He knocked it right in the middle of the hole, nice and firm. I'm sure you'll see him really go all out with this one, probably with the three wood, though, because he likes to stay kind of up on the slope of the hill. And you saw the narrow passageway with his wood. Put a hard swing on it. The four caddy now indicates that it is near the middle and it is long. It is on the down slope. Jack Nicholas has found the fairway on the 72nd hole tied with Lee Trevino. Now Jim Simons, who started out today at three under, he is now one over. Big hole for this amateur. Chris, he's played remarkably well. Of course, the Walker Cup, then the British Amateur, and now and then the American Open. Get up, get up. Get up. Ten years younger, sending the ball forward. And to the golfer's left. And as it is being marked, it, it appears to be in the rough for Jim Simons, trailing by a shot. More final round action in the United States Open continues after this brief pause. In the clubhouse at even par, the happy Mex, Lee Trevino at 280, sweating it out. And uh, Lee, what distracted you on that putt? Well, bud, you know, it's, uh, these people are so wonderful out here. We've got 19,000 of them out here. And over on the left-hand side, uh, there was a kid up on the scoreboard and he fell off, but I don't want to use any excuses. I probably would have missed the putt anyway. The putter felt like it weighed 50 pounds, and the hole looked like a, a, a very small hole. And it looked like I was putting with a tennis ball there for a second, but uh, I used a little too much club on the, on the uh, last hole. I used three wood, but uh, this is a tremendous hole, and I didn't hit a very good drive, so I deserve a bogey, I would think. <laughs> <laughs> you, know, you, don't, you know, you don't mean that at all. There's well, a little change since you came up in 1967 to the Open. Nobody knows who in the heck you were. Well, I don't think anybody knows who I'm yet, really. But, no, I, I, I have a, a tremendous following uh, throughout the, uh, the United States, and I hope all my friends are watching, and I appreciate it very much. And I try and play the best I can. I've had a pretty good string going. Uh, the last five tournaments, I could have won, won all five of them. And uh, when I came here and looked at this great golf course, Marion, it's a, it's a thinking man's golf course. It's a, it, it, you have to drive the ball well, you have to place it on the greens well with iron shots, and you have to putt exceptionally well. I just happen to have a good week going, and uh, I just, uh, it looks like Jack has is, is dri driven the ball about 400 yards on the last hole, so somebody says nobody's ever made a birdie on the last hole to, uh, to win the U.S. Open before, and I hope it doesn't happen here. Well, listen, stick around. <laughs> we'll, yeah, we'll come back to you. Now back to Chris Shankle. <laughs> How's that for attitude? Lee Trevino. As you look at the hole models, we'll give you an indication where Jim Simons hit his tee shot to the left in the rough and short of the tee shot by Jack Nicholas on the right. Jack got good length on his tee shot. Uh, pretty good position, Byron, to uh, this green. I can say it is. Uh, as usual, Jack 
stands out in the middle of the fairway uh, looking to the pin. Simons, of course, at this point, uh, stand below the ball, and the edge of the rough has a very difficult shot to play. And uh, for his, to his everlasting credit, I hope that he gets a real good one. He was real bad place. So I don't think that he caught it very well out of that rough. People looking for the ball, but I don't think it came out of the rough. I think it just left side and short quite a little bit. Now then, down on the golfer's left. Now the Jack, with the drive that he hit here, or even the whole 458 yards, I'm guessing, Chris, that he's going with a five iron today. How about his strategy, Byron? Well, his strategy is going to be to try to knock the ball right from the middle of the green. The green slope to the left is he'll, I'm sure, try to carry the ball high, as Jack can do quite easily, hit the ball into the right center of the green, let the ball drift to the left, which is the slope of the green. Been a lot of ball going over today, and uh, as you just saw Lee do, and uh, if he hit it real solid, it could go over also in that long run. Ball is on its way. I the center the green, and it, uh, if it. Jack Nicholas has put his second shot on the par four 18th hole about 10 feet from the cup. And if he could put it in the cup with the next stroke, he will have won his third open championship, Byron. Yes, well, Chris, you know, he's made th three putts out of the last four holes this same length, so he should have confidence on his putting. Of course, he's, he really can't roll this ball very hard because he's must he has quite a lot of slope downhill from there, but very little break. Byron, he has another three going. The last three tournaments that we have televised, the PGA Championship, the Tournament of Champions, and the Byron Nelson Classic, Jack Nicklaus has won them. Well, maybe he should underwrite ABC. <laughs> well, he could. The money he's making, he could underwrite most anything. Jack Nicklaus, who began his drive on the open, open title starting in 1960, losing in a playoff to Arnold Palmer. And as we look at Ben Hogan, who hit a one iron, not quite the distance that, or a little longer rather, than the shot Jack had. And Ben, of course, went on to tie uh, Lloyd Magrum and George Fazio, who's in attendance here. Sure great to see George around. And then the next day, won the playoff. And here's Jack Nicholas, who has won twice in 1962 at Oakmont in a playoff defeating Palmer. And then in 67, defeating Arnold Palmer by four at Baldus Raw. Chris, I believe that Jack plays with more confidence. I've played golf a long time and hard, but I don't believe I've ever seen anyone play with the confidence that Jack does. And for a 21-year-old native Pennsylvania, this is Jim Simon's third shot on the final hole. The amateurs have played marvelous here. Lanny Watkins, the national amateur champion, has had 68 twice, Chris. Ben Crenshaw had won 68. Jim Simons of 65 yesterday. A little bit strong. He was all keyed up. I'm sure that drill's really going. If it's just over the back edge of the green in his third shot. Jack Nicklaus now moving on the green. Three Masters victories. Two British Opens. Two PGAs. With this putt, we'll be seeking his third United States Open. Meanwhile, Lee Trevino over by the practice putting green in a fiery red shirt is trying to may remain very calm, looking away at the moment, but he'll be checking things out. Jim Simons, that was his third stroke, and it was long. And uh, Bud Palmer's there with Lee. Uh, what's Lee's uh, temperature now, Bud? Uh, I don't know what Lee's temperature is. He just waved to Jack Nicklaus. You analyze his putt of Jack, will you, Lee? Well, I think it, uh, it's a, it's not really a difficult putt. Uh, it, is, it is a... What's the length, do you think? Well, it, it looks to me like it's about from 12 to 15 feet. Uh, I, I think that the putt is fairly straight. Uh, the object here is to, is to start the ball 
on the right line. Now, it'll be difficult to start the ball on the right line merely because it's so fast coming down that hill. But I think he has a fairly easy putt because he has he doesn't have to worry about getting the ball to the hole. In other words, striking it. The only thing he's worried about here is starting the ball on the right line. So I, I really don't think that the putt is, is really that hard. Uh, it, I think it's, it's harder than the one that I had, but mine was about halfway. I think we'll see you tomorrow. We'll wait and see. Okay, Chris. Fine. Jim Simons will hit first. He is off the green. Flagstick here with a wicker basket at Marion. Wicker baskets uh, way back were used at Wingfoot, which will be the site of the Open in a couple of years. Next year it'll be at Pebble Beach. Bill Coleman and staff from that coastal golf course were here observing the fine work done by Marion. Fine work done by this amateur as well. his fourth stroke on this par Chris, four, 18th. That looks uh, like that he just flubbed it, but it mm -hmm. wasn't. The ball is lying in a very loose grass. It's fluffing. And if you don't hit exactly right, why you, you what we call just kind of fluff the ball a little bit. If you catch a little thing, it rolls way past. And uh, it wasn't, it was, looked pretty simple, but it really was not. It was most difficult. Byron, the man in the uh, lemon colored shirt is looking over his putt for a victory. And in 1960, when he was an amateur, he set the open 72-hole record for an amateur, 282. Jim Simons, if he can make his putt now, will equal that mark of 282. Well, of course, Simons, I think, is still away, and uh, he mm -hmm. will putt before Jack does and give Jack plenty of time to uh, look at the line of his putt. Jack's putt is, as Lee said, is downhill. I actually would uh, disagree with a little bit. I think that Lee's putt was more difficult than Jack because Lee's putt breaks very hard to the right, and Jack's putt has very little break in it. It'll break slightly right at the hole, but the only thing he has to worry about is not hitting the ball too hard, really, more he is, because if he tried to, hit, tried to make the three, he could go three or four feet past and have a tough putt left. Now then, this putt is the same line that Lee's had. Now, you watch this putt break to the right unless he hits it real hard. It really goes off to the right. Doesn't look like that much either. Just a faction hard, but it was really breaking, Chris. Deserved applause for Jim Simons, who led after the third round at three under. And he finishes the championship at three over. Tonight, he'll be on his way to Tucson to get ready for the NCAA championships. Jim Simons, playing with Wake Forest. Another amateur that did well here, Danny Yates, will be going there to represent the University of Georgia. And from Ohio State, as an NCAA individual champion, way back, 31-year-old Jack Nicholas looking over a winning putt. If not successful putt, then yes, a tie and a playoff. At this point, you almost have to go with the percentages. He's been holding these putts now the last few holes. And the percentage is that you can't make all of them. But Jack uh, always does the unexpected. Byron, I know uh, as a former Open champion, you have experienced the loneliness of being on that 18th hole. But you know what happens, Chris, what really makes us alone. All these people here, and you'll hear some noise till you get up to hit your putt. There'll be a mumble, a rumble, a rumble, a rumble, people, a rumble, a rumble, a rumble. Mm -hmm. you hear all this, and all of a sudden, just about the time you get to strike, it goes dead silence. And then is when you feel that loneliness. It gets what you call deafening silence. I'm having trouble holding this microphone, no, let alone holding a putter. Well, this man has a great set of nerves, plus a great game. Playoff 
with this tap in. 18 holes tomorrow, a telecast. It will be on the air at 4.30. A par four for Jack Nicholas at the 72nd hole. A bogey five for Lee Trevino, and things are all even. Jack Nicholas finishing at 280, which is even par, and Byron, they did not better. No, they didn't. It proves one thing, and that what a great golf course that Marin is. It stood the test of the onslaught of the great players of today. It stood it for three open championships as well as all the other great tournaments that have been held here. It's a marvelous golf course in great condition. It's a marvelous tournament. Lee Trevino with a 69 today. Jack Nicholas with a 71. And once again, the results of the fourth and regulation round. All tied, Lee Trevino at 280. Jack Nicholas at 280, a playoff tomorrow on the air, 4.30 Eastern Time, all this on ABC.